Welcome into Rice Seckle Stadium for the 5A state championship football game on live.ksl and deseretnews.com. Dusty Litster and Dane Stewart from Deseret News Rewind with you. Our matchup, the Corner Canyon Chargers and the Sky Ridge Falcons. Back-to-back -back years, Sky Ridge in the 5A championship game. Last year, they got here by shocking Corner Canyon. This year, they got to get through Corner Canyon. They claim their first ever state championship in school history. That's only three years in existence. For Corner Canyon, fell one game shy a year ago, but they, too, are looking for their first ever state championship, game, or state championship in football and their first ever championship game appearance. Yeah, and some added motivation here tonight for Corner Canyon. You mentioned that game last year. Corner Canyon seemingly had that game under control, and back come the Falcons. It's been a bit of a revenge tour for Corner Canyon. Obviously, they would love to get past Skyward to give them a dose of their own medicine based off of what happened right here on this field last year in the semifinals. When you look at Skyridge, Dusty, this is a team that when you look at that semifinal, and I'm thinking all class, I don't know if there was a more complete effort by any team in the semifinals than what we saw from this Skyridge team. Jaden Clements threw the ball extremely well, ran the ball well, Natua played well, the defense was fantastic. If they have that kind of an effort tonight, it might be tough for Corner Canyon, who got a little bit of a wake-up call last week against a stingy, stingy Titan squad. Yeah. These two teams could not have gotten here in any different ways yeah. than what happened last week. Sky Ridge ran away from Roy, who gave a spirit of battle at the beginning of the game. Corner Canyon was in for the fight of their lives. They were one drive away from falling apart again in the semifinals as we are underway in the 5A championship game, taken inside the five. Out to the 20-yard line, and that is where Clemens and the Sky Ridge offense will start. Jaden Clemens, a senior, led this team to a state championship game a year ago. He is better this year than he was last year. That goes without saying, going from a junior year to a senior year. He is a lot more confident, but not only that, Dane, he's a lot more competent in throwing the football, but it was running the ball that made him electric -y a week ago. Boy, he was so dynamic, Dusty. And when you mix him with Ma'anatoa, lined up in the backfield right now, a full healthy year from him, this offense, Upham, Palmer, all sorts of options. Going for Upham, and it's nearly intercepted by John Scheffner. Couldn't quite squeeze it. Incomplete, and we'll be at second and 10. I love the aggressive nature of Skyridge out of the gate. Hey, we're going to take a shot. We're going to go with our best receiver down the field. Up him, the feet got tangled up here a little bit. If it's not for that, I love his opportunity to win this ball in the air. See lots of air under it. You see the feet getting mixed up. And a nice job that time by Scheffner, who was stride for stride. The last two offensive plays, Skyridge Corner Canyon, deep balls to Nate Upham. It was Upham who caught the game-winning ball last year in the semifinals. Go up the middle with Ma'an Natoa. Natoa tackled by Caden Johnson, a gain of five in his third and five. It was actually Ainsworth. Oh, it is Ainsworth. The uh, all sought look-alike, <laughs> Dusty. And love this kid, love what he brings to this offense. It is Ainsworth, still the deep back. He was the starting running back last year in the state championship. Ma on the Toa tore his ACL in mid-year mid last year. As Clemens going to throw, throws on the slant, incomplete, looking for Upham, no flag, much of the dismay of Sky Ridge, and it'll be a three and out for the Falcons. Upham was only able to get one hand up to try to bring that ball in. I think that that's what the Sky Ridge fans wanted to call on, was some help, and it was tough to see. We're pretty far up here in the stadium. It was tough to see if there was contact deserving of a flag but none coming from the officials and a fourth down here. The Corner Canyon defense successful on the uh, first go around. Scheffner hanging out around the 30 yard line for this punt. Strong kick, takes a Sky Ridge bounce. Scheffner takes it on the hop at around the 23 and that's where he's dropped. And that brings out Cole Hagen and this Corner Canyon offense. High powered is the least of what to say what this team has had this year offensively. Hagen has successfully succeeded Zach Wilson, who was a three-year starter at Corner Canyon, was outstanding, was our Offensive Player of the Year last year at Deseret News Rewind. He's been spectacular. He is only a junior, and last week in his biggest test, 
he was able to come through with the big win. Yeah, they've had a lot of big plays over the course of the season. John Mitchell, a target to watch for, one of his favorite down-the-field threats. Good to see Corner Canyon here come out and start with a run, Dusty. It was one of the things that I thought, you know, they fall in love with that passing attack against Skyridge. If they do, it might be trouble. I think it's important for Corner Canyon to establish the run here early. Caden Johnson, the man they call Cooge, the reigning Region 7 MVP, is a star on both sides of the ball. It was his running game that won the game last week when their season was on the line. 57 yards on the final drive. He was right in the teeth of this defensive front and nothing doing. They might have to bang their head against the wall as he had a run right into Kila Fanene. And now a flag comes out post whistle. You know, this was one of the things that stood out to me last week. And for those of you who watched that semifinal game, there were a lot of, well, and early on, there were celebration penalties. There were unsportsmanlike penalties on Sky Ridge. And they completely overmatched Roy. So it didn't come back to bite them too much. Against Corner Canyon, you can't give them free yards. And it's the second play from the line of scrimmage. And you've got a defensive mental error that is gifting a free first down for the well, one of the top scoring offenses in the classification, I think the. I think is the is correct. Is that is uh, they call on Tongiai. Let me get a look. You see him stood up. I thought I saw someone come in here late and give a bit of a gesture around the defensive stop. We're moving on. So on first down again, nothing there. Tongiai once again makes the stop. He's a emotional leader of this team. But he's also an emotional player as well, but he is a name we're going to be seeing a lot tonight. So good, Tony Ai, and had a big impact in that semifinal win last year for Sky Ridge. They need him to be a real defensive leader out there today against this offense. Another name to keep in mind is Lolo, Lolo Ross as Hagen throws to the sideline. John and Mitchell, what a grab. We just saw a spectacular wide receiver play in the 6-8 championship game, and John Mitchell has every bit of the opportunity to be as good today as Roberts was. John Mitchell, a star on the basketball team last year that went to the state championship game, gave up basketball in the offseason to focus on football, and it's been a good decision. We mentioned his down-the-field threat. He's been a dynamic receiver in this offense. It's Johnson bouncing it outside. Inside the 40-yard line goes Johnson. He has a first down at the 41. First and 10, Chargers. Intent on running the football. So important. And Caden Johnson, you know, one of the things, Dusty, that last week against Olympus, I wondered that last drive that won the game for them, it was running the football that really won that game for Corner Canyon. I hope that they would take a lesson from that and come out here, take some of the pressure off their junior quarterback, his first time in a state championship, first time on a huge stage like this, take some of that pressure off. They've done so here on the first drive. Hagan to throw, pressure coming off the edge. He got away from it. Now goes to tuck and run. He gets away from Tongyai and has a gain where it could have been a loss. And then Tongyai get into it on the sideline. And I'm not certain. This might be this on the is corner, be on Canyon corner Canyon bench. Yeah. So Tongyai came into that bench pretty hot. Um, and not like fired up, but with some momentum. And saw some corner Canyon players push him off. Great job here by Cole Hagen. Able to escape some of the pressure. You see, you're going to have to wrap him up. None of that shoulder stuff's going to work against him. You see Tongyai go back there. When he shoved Hagen. He did give a little shove. I, I think that second one is what's going to get caught. And it's no. called on Sky Ridge. And this is stuff that you, you have to get in check. You can be excited. You can play with emotion, but you cannot be emotional. And that's two of them. On the first drive, this defense already well, flagged for two of those. And he's lucky it wasn't unsportsmanlike conduct. Because that would have been gone. Two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, and you're out. As they go to Caden Johnson at the middle, and he is met by Tedrick Toyolo, Toyolo, amongst others there for the Falcons. In response to him just shed off the block. It was like, yeah, nice try. It says, uh, no soup for you up front. <laughs> but Jackson Light is who he tossed aside. As Johnson goes in motion. Going to go quick screen and some room in front. It'll be second down, or probably third and two is on the catch and run. Talmadge Handley. 
really love the way that they're introducing Cole Hagen. We've seen a couple runs. His first, second throw today. And Dusty, it's just a little screen pass. Try to keep some of those throws short against a really aggressive and talented defense. Third and short. They go with Johnson. There was a flag on the play and most likely a procedure penalty on Corner Canyon. I don't know if they had enough men on the line of scrimmage or because most post-snap penalties will not go against the defense. Legal shift against Corner Canyon. Make this third down and seven. And that nullifies the first down carry there from Caden Johnson. Got to get to the 10 for the first down, so third and seven from the 17. Nine seconds on the play clock. Now down to five. Hagen sets up a screen to Johnson. It's red and dropped. That's an incomplete pass. Nicely read and broken up by Tonavasa. And now a decision here for Coach Kerr. Does he kick a field goal or go for it? It looks like he's bringing out the field goal unit. Yeah. Fantastic job of bursting through those blockers up front and breaking it up. Tanavasa had a nice game last week as well on that semifinal. And this defense is just loaded for Sky Ridge. There's so many guys out there. We talked about Ross, we talked about Tongi, Tumivasa, another one. A lot of talent on that defensive side who gets a, a big stop here inside the red zone. It will be a 34-yard field goal attempt from Connor Lewis. Good snap, hold. He's got the leg, and he's got it. The first points come from the foot for Corner Canyon. 7.22 to go in the first quarter. 3-0 in the 5A championship game on live.ksl and desertnews.com. Commentary brought to you by Tosh, Orthopedic Specialty Hospital. So after the field goal, 3-0 to lead for Corner Canyon as Sky Ridge able to battle through penalties and other things that kept extending that drive. Well, not extending it, but helping and aiding the movement. As it was a penalty, actually stopped Corner Canyon as they were moving the ball. Actually had a first down as this ball taken out the goal line and dropped at the 15-yard line. On the return was Palmer. And uh, maybe shouldn't let that bounce through. So it'll be a long field for the second drive of the game for Sky Ridge. You know, Dusty, I was thinking that same thing. I'm never a big fan of returners trying to keep the ball out of the end zone. And then I think back to the 6A state championship game. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> what would I know? There's always, but, of course, not everyone's Nate Ritchie. If it works, it works. <laughs> right, right. And he wears the same number as Nate yeah, Ritchie. Yeah, yeah. The school's like two minutes away from Lone Peak. So Natoa now in at running back. He did not start the game. Clemens pulls on the zone read, and just like last week. It looks like they got him hemmed in. He picks up five yards. It'll be second and five. 
I think this is going to be the key play to stop. You'll see Skyridge run a lot of RPOs, some of that zone read. They like to engage Clemens. They have a lot of confidence in him. They know a multi-year starter. He's going to settle in, going to be reliable. Got to defend that ground game, take it away from this versatile quarterback to start. And it's Natola going off the far side, and Ma'a gets a yard. It'll be third down and four for the Falcons. You see that edge rush that time. Max Swenson there for Corner Canyon. He'll force that run to Natoa. And, you know, for all the talk about this game, even the front of Corner Canyon, you look at Von, Van Fillinger, some of these other kids up front, they're extremely talented. Wilson, the linebacker. Johnson, the linebacker. It's a stout front seven for Corner Canyon. Third down and four. It was three and out on the first drive. Clemens, quick set and incomplete. It is two three and outs for Sky Ridge. Broken up by Corner Canyon's number 21, Andrew McDonald. Jane Clemens has yet to throw a completion. A couple good balls, but yet so far, it's been the Corner Canyon defense, Dusty. They've gotten hands on every one of them, been able to break them up. Scheffner waits around the 30-yard line. It was a strong punt the first time. 6.07 left here. We'll get that clock back up. Sorry, technical difficulty. Scheffner going to let this bounce. And it hops inside the 40. And he thought maybe it might have hit the Skyridge play around the 40. And that's what the official saying to. So it'll be first and 10 for the 40 yard, from the 40-yard line for Hagen and the Chargers. And for, I think, really big thing here, Dane, and I don't want to overstate this, and we don't want to go negative town. It's high school football and things like that. Emotionally, the team who is able to be handle their emotions is going to get the hold on this game first. Start on the ground with Bell, and Bell bounces it outside. It's a gain of six, maybe seven, as he is dropped by Nico Toilolo. But it is seven yards on first down. You know, Skyridge comes out, and I, mean, I don't want to say that they, you know, do anything that Corner Canyon wasn't expecting, but Nato doesn't get a carry the first drive. Yeah, neither did Bell. And, you know, for all the talk about Caden Johnson out of the backfield, Bell's actually ran for more yards this year. Both of them very capable, averaging over five yards a clip. Uh, Austin Bell and Caden Johnson have been a dynamic uh, backfield for Corner Canyon. Back on the ground with Bell, a couple of yards. It's going to be third down and two. Got to get to midfield for the first down. Again, you see a first down run, second down run. Love Corner Canyon going back to that ground game. There's so much talk in football this year about passing, 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 and Cole Hagen is certainly capable of doing that. But a junior, let's just ease him into this thing, and there's no rush to go and break Boone Abbott's newly set 519 <laughs> yards passing in a championship match. And there's no rush to do that, Dusty. All in good time, my friend. You and I obviously do not play NCAA football against each other. <laughs> <laughs> no time better than the present to have over a thousand yards combined in back-to-back -back games five seconds on the play clock and they've got a procedure penalty again a third and two now third and seven One of the other matchups that I think is going to be real interesting to watch. We haven't talked about him yet. How about Noah Kerr, the sophomore wide receiver, extremely quick, lines up in the slot. How does Sky Ridge and those linebackers deal with that speedy receiver that Corner Canyon has just waiting to take advantage? They're not going to have to take advantage of it here. Third and seven for the Chargers. Hagen. Quick set, fire over the middle, and it's complete to Mitchell. Johnny Mitchell breaks free, and Johnny Mitchell has the first score, the first touchdown of the game. And just like that, it is 9-0 Corner Canyon on the catch and run from Johnny Mitchell. But a flag on the plate, the 20-yard line. You think you can single John Mitchell? I think Coach Kerr would love that matchup right there. You see an unnecessary block coming in, and this one's going to be coming back, Dusty. The peel-back block. 
and unneeded. I mean, you talk about emotion, and, and you know that one doesn't have the jumping and the flair, but keeping your wits about you, he's of no threat to catch John Mitchell. That's one you just got to let go. Go celebrate with John in the end zone. Unnecessary and a costly one here for Corner Canyon. The intent understood, saying, I'm not going to get him, but absolutely costly. Takes six off the board, and it's first and 10 at the 30 yard line. Fifteen seconds on the play clock for the Chargers. And can they stay within themselves here after not getting to keep the six? Zone read, they go to Bell. And Bell tracked down from behind by Tonav Tonavasa. And it'll be second down to nine. So officially that'll go down as a 37-yard completion with a 10-yard penalty, I believe. Was it at the 25? Was it the 20? 20, okay. Two by two formation. Hagen fires deep, got care, and it's overthrown. It'll be third and nine now for the Chargers. How costly could that block in the back be? I'd presume two down territory here for Corner Canyon. And that one obviously a home home run ball, trying to test that speed of care, see how that defense aligns, and Skyridge able to hold up on that second down play. 15 seconds on the play clock for the Chargers. Care and Mitchell near side. Hagen. Pressure comes and down he goes. It is Ross coming off the edge. A big time play turned in by 31. Man, there's even two guys there to take care of number 31 and just doesn't matter. Fantastic rush that time by Ross, the junior, able to get to Cole Hagen. And that's a that's a huge sack right now because Corner Canyon, again, they've got to get to the 20. So they've got fourth and a long way to go. Loholani Ross with the sack. 2.55 on the running clock, fourth and 18. Bringing pressure. Hagen steps up. Hagen now throws. It's past the line Intercepted at the 10 yard line. It's an illegal forward pass, but it's picked off by Ty Arrington inside the 10. And probably going to take the penalty. I don't know if you want the ball inside the 10 yard line. Right. No, I, I think you definitely take the penalty. And even the line of scrimmage was at the 38. So we'll have another look here. You can see the marker right there. Hagen, oh, yeah. yard past that. Good job by the official spotting that and throwing the, the flag. That block in the back, Dane, that's something Huge. to remember right now. This game was. It was a touchdown for John Mitchell. So they're saying first down. So legal forward pass, take that from the spot. And it's a loss of down. And we got a timeout on the field. 2.41 left in the first quarter. You're watching the 5A championship game on live.ksl.com at DesireNews.com.
So now comes Clemens and the Falcons. Great field position at the 42-yard line. Shockingly enough, here's their third drive. They have yet to pick up a first down the first two drives. Two, three, and outs, and, and here they got backed up 15 yards at the end of that one, too. Dusty, they have yet to throw a complete pass. In Corner Canyon right now, I mean, I've got Skyridge for three carries. Well, sorry, four carries for 13 yards and three incompletions. So right now this Corner Canyon defense showing every bit the part of the number two scoring defense that they were in the classification this year, and that was only behind Olympus that had a defense at historic levels. Second and eight. Keep it on the ground. It's Clemens on the zone read. Read well by Corner Canyon's number nine, Max Swenson. And it's a loss. Actually, they're going to give it back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third and nine. Great job here by Swenson. And he's going to be tasked with this zone read. You see him duck underneath just for a hair. Clemens takes that as an opportunity. And Swenson closing it down. Great show of speed from the senior linebacker for Corner Canyon. Last week, Clemens continued to win that one-on-one -on -one battle with the end man line scrimmage over and over and over again. Third and nine from the 43, and we got flags. So it's either a false start on offsides. Skyridge was clapping. They're thinking it's going to go in their favor. So goes from third and nine to third and four. Let's see. It was a block in the back, took six off. That helped out Skyridge's defense, and now this could help out the offense. Almost certainly. I mean, this offense still waiting to get in rhythm. And once it does, Dusty, it's a thing of beauty, yeah. the Skyridge offense. But you're helping them out here. You're giving them a third and short rather than a third and long. See if the Falcons can take advantage. Third and four. Clemens, quick set, hits on the slant. The catch is made by Nate Upham, and it is a first down for the Falcons at the 46-yard line of Corner Canyon. Costly, costly turn or er, penalty. Have another look. And this pair, so good last year, has been good all year this year. It's a tough matchup for Corner Canyon to deal with Nate Upham. Had a great summer as well and all the seven-on-seven -seven camps as they go to Natoa on first down. And Ma'a gets bent inside the 45-yard line of the 44, getting a two. With great patience by the second level of Corner Canyon here. Fantastic job, Dusty. Linebackers just waiting for Natoa to pick a hole. The moment he does, able to pounce on him, limit the game to just two yards. He's a big, bruising back. Over 1,500 yards gained this year on the ground by Ma'an Natoa. Ten seconds on the play clock for Clemens. Goes Natoa once again, and that he lost out. the football. And it looked like he might have got back on top of it, and he did. Luckily for Sky Ridge, it'll be third and long. Well, I thought Corner Canyon had this. You have another look. That ball just poked out, and it's just right there. Yeah, good job by Ma'a to get back on that ball. Another third and long coming up here for Sky Ridge. It was third and nine before a penalty on the last third, or, pardon me, before the first down. And now third down and eight. Trips at the bottom of the screen, and now a timeout taken by Sky Ridge. I think it's just a play clock issue. Oh, no, end of the first quarter. Oh, wow. That just blew by. Too much fun in the 5A championship game. End of the first quarter. It is Corner Canyon 3, Sky Ridge 0. You're watching the 5A Championship on live.ksl and deseretnews.com. Commentary brought to you by Tosh.
Start of the second quarter, 3-0 the lead for Corner Canyon. And it's third down and eight. Clemens, pressure coming, fires over the middle, and incomplete. And it'll be fourth down, and more than likely the punting unit coming on, and they're going to have to rely on that defense with a long field behind them. You see the pressure coming from the top. Forces this throw maybe a little early. If Clemens is able to hold on to that a little bit, able to square up, he's got a wide open receiver down the field. But again, this Corner Canyon defense makes a big stop. Start of the second quarter. Look at this formation. Fourth down and eight, they shift back. What could have been, huh? Yeah. I was kind of excited there for a second. <laughs> and that takes a corner. Canyon Bell, oh, what a save. Oh, just missed it. How about the effort there from Tonabasa, I believe that's who it was. Yep, yep. Nearly able to keep that thing in. Another look. Holy cow, Dustin. I mean, this was that close, and he's not buying the fake by care at all. Whoa. Well, it hits the oh, line hit right the there. Yep. Yeah. Just for a second, I thought. Yeah. But again, I will defend high school officials in that there's no replay. Yep. The only replay they have is mental. Which, by the way, I prefer. For the, I'm not for the a flow fan of, of replay. Game. Yeah, for the flow of the game, absolutely. Well, I, there's other things, too. But. And you're going to start on the ground. This is Caden Johnson. He and Austin Bell split duties. Now about Johnson moving the pile? I was about to say just a minimal gain, and he ended up pushing the pile three extra yards. Gain a four on first down. It'll be second and six. Interesting. If he comes to the near side of that, Dusty, they've got second-level blocking. Maybe has an opportunity to pick up seven, eight more yards. Call it second and seven. Hagen, quick set, fires. Johnny Mitchell. This kid, we talk about guys we don't talk about enough. John Mitchell is one of them. What a grab. Well, right now he's got three of the four receptions on the day for corner cane receivers. And I mean, man, you look at that. That ball elevating, able to go behind his body to bring that ball in. Fantastic job by John Mitchell. And a false start on Corner Canyon. You know, if I recall correctly, and not to heap on a kid, I think John Mitchell had a tough semifinal game against Sky Ridge last year, if I recall. Had a couple yeah. of times where they tried to dial it up for him, and including that last drive. And you can tell he is, uh, well, he's ready, focused, ready to go. And this whole Corner Canyon offense has looked that way here in the early going. Changed the number. Bringing the blitz up the middle. Tongi I giving chase to Hagen. Trips him up, and Hagen goes out of bounds as Tongi I able to get to him. John Mitchell is making a move down the field, and nice shot by Tongi at that time, able to trip up the quarterback. Still able to pick up a pair. Second down and 13. Trips at the bottom of the screen. Mitchell singled up at the top of the screen. Safety shading that way as well. Hagen fires from Mitchell, and it's overthrown. That pressure came behind him, and I don't know that Hagen kind of just couldn't quite get enough on that. So you say on it. Couldn't drive it. Yeah. Third down and 13. Same formation, trips to the bottom, Mitchell at the top. Trying to clear it out, there's Mitchell on the screen, and Mitchell gets across the 40. Tanavasa forced him out of bounds, and it's fourth and eight. Like this concept here, John Mitchell, great length, has good speed. How about the one-arm grab that time for Mitchell? we will pick up a few yards, though certainly won't be enough. Bring up a fourth down. He was run out actually by uh, Tongiai. Late addition coming in for 
Corner Canyons, first punt. Pressure coming from Sky Ridge. It wasn't pretty, but then again, the punting team hasn't had to work a whole lot this year for Corner Canyon as that rolls inside the 20-yard line down to the 15 before it's finally down. Timeout on the field, 10-13 left in the half. Chargers lead 3-0 in the 5A championship game on live.ksl and DesireNews.com. Ten minutes and 13 seconds left in the half of the 5A state championship game. Dusty Litster and Dane Stewart of Deseret News Rewind with you. Our commentary is brought to you by Tosh, orthopedic specialty hospital. Anything's going on. Transition from sports. Feel some tightness. Just a little unsure. Some things going on in the body. The experts at Tosh are there to help you. Call them at 801-314-4040 for a free injury assessment. Clemens and the Falcon offense continue to struggle a little bit here. One first down on three drives as Natoa gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's just like everyone thought. I mean, this <laughs> game, I've got a combined 121 yards of total offense between the two teams. And these are teams that routinely score in the 40s and the 50s week in, week out. They have combined one loss on the year between them. That was week one, Sky Ridge against Riverton. And right now, it's been a defensive showdown. And you can look at the semifinals for 5A. You can look at the championship in 6A. Defense has been the story in uh, 2018. Clemens steps up. He's got a lot of room. Clemens coming near side looking for that first down marker and has it. He's pushed out of bounds at around the 30-yard line. It'll be a fresh set of downs for the Falcons. Biggest play of the day for Sky Ridge right there. And, you know, this is the thing about Jane Clemens. You may think you have him. Great job of finding a hole to get out of that pocket and pick up a first down and maybe something to try to spark this Sky Ridge offense. Caden Johnson, very lucky not pick up a 15-yard penalty there. So first down at the 30. And it'll be Natoa on first down, and he is met quickly by Wilson and dropped there. Nice job by the junior linebacker, Josh Wilson, the younger brother of Zach Wilson. If you're Corner Canyon, and I told you that, you know, we're in the second quarter and Natoa has six carries for seven yards. It's been a nice job by that defensive front seven for Corner Canyon. They're just not allowing much on the ground today. Coach Kerr would say, yeah, I think we'd be up by 14 points. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's not for a penalty, it'd be very close to being accurate, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Second down and eight. Back to the ground, Natoa, and they have got to stick with it. I actually agree with some of this. And once again, Wilson meeting Natoa. And now it's third down and seven. You mentioned Wilson, just a junior. Been a great addition to this defense. As uh, you know, it's been one of the uh, one of the things about coach care teams. You can go back to Jordan. And sometimes the offense has been there and the defense hasn't. Well, this year the defense is there. It's what makes this corner candy team different from all of those other coach care teams. Clem They've all been very good. Clemens forced out of the pocket. There's a flag on the play. The pass is incomplete. And right now it's fourth down, but I think we got a hold. Unless it's hands to the face. They are signaling a hold, so 
Looking like Corner Canyon likely to decline this penalty, I would presume, and bring up a fourth down. So holding against Sky Ridge. And they're calling on LaFord, and there it is. Jane Clemens, one for six. Got off to a similar slow start in the semi, Dusty, and then they started to pick it up. Scheffner waits around the 25-yard line for this punt. Has not got a return on the previous ones, and he's not going to get a return on this one as that takes a charger bounce toward the 35-yard line. And we have a timeout on the field. 7.51 remaining in the half. Chargers offense going back out. You're watching the 5A Championship on live.ksl and deseretnews.com. So out comes Corner Canyon leading three to nothing. Their offense has been effective, but this is a stingy, very fast and physical Sky Ridge defense. They go speed option. Hagen slips out of a couple tackles and Hagen's got some room. Cross midfield and Cole Hagen with a nice run and it's first and 10 chargers at the 47 yard line of Sky Ridge. I thought Cole had made a mistake here. Dusty, looks like he gets bottled up right near the line of scrimmage. I thought, oh, he probably should have gotten rid of that and instead is able to find a way around the edge. Fantastic run here by Cole Hagen, a gain of 18. It's Austin Bell in the backfield as Hagen goes shovel underneath and defenders are right there and it was Loholani Ross initially and then coming up to clean up was uh, Mitch Sampson. And I think Bell's about to come off the field but it looks like Sampson... Uh, John Villapiano, who was a linebacker for the Raiders, he called it the can opener. And now he's getting that arm underneath the helmet, and you pop it off. Watch this at the end. And it'll force Bell out of the game here. Now or he has it. Watch, the two. Watch the end. I was just trying to get up. <laughs> so that brings in... Actually, no, Bella did stay in the game as pressure comes. Loholani Ross got there first and then cleaned up by Tedrick Toilolo. That's a big loss all the way back to their own 40-yard line. It is going to be third down and 23. This is the Sky Ridge defense that was haunting Region 8 this year. And you see they bring an extra guy, but it is Ross that gets there and then finished up on the play by Toilolo. Important for Corner Canyon here to not get greedy, Dusty. Even if you punt from your own 40, still going to push Sky Ridge back. The last thing you want to do is gift them the possession around midfield. Yeah, press man coverage. And now looks like an offside penalty and no flag. Going deep is Hagen for Mitchell. And incomplete. Fourth down, punting unit comes out. I thought he almost came down with that ball. I'm going to see a big hit here on Hagen. I think that's a legal hit. Yep, absolutely. But you see four to one downfield, and this is almost like a punt, really. And it was almost Upham who almost came up with the pick, actually. Mitch Adamson on defense. As that ball takes a corner, Canyon bounce once again. 
Gets near the 20 yard line. Uh, gets to, yeah, 21. So that brings out Skyridge's offense once again. And Dane still waiting for the fine rhythm. And I think the most impressive part of what we've seen from Corner Canyon tonight, it has been the run defense. No matter if it was Ainsworth yeah. or Natoa, they have been stout and they've been sure tacklers. So if you look at the backs, Natoa and Ainsworth, I've got eight carries for 13 yards. Jane Clemens has three for 18. One of those coming off the 14-yard run that was a pass play. And the ball's up on the ground and recovered by Corner Canyon. Swenson. Max Swenson read that perfectly on all three counts. Yep. He let the fly, fake fly sweep go. He let the read go. And Clemens drops it. Mentioned he's going to be tasked with defending this zone read. And he knows that ball's out right there. And Swenson, a fantastic job to get on it. Dusty, there have been a couple times where they've ran that zone read, and every time he's made a spectacular play. Handled it well. Now can the offense cash in, and can this Sky Ridge defense continue to answer the bell as they have been very, very good. Hagen going deep. Defenders are there as well. Probably an ill-advised throw, nicely broken up. It'll be second down. Now they're starting to let Hagen throw a little more. And you look, I've got him two of his last five for six yards. This one to the end zone, and you mentioned ill-advised. I would say so. I know you want to trust your receivers down the field, but when you've got double coverage, that one, you're almost giving it up. Second down, and it's Caden Johnson gets strung out. Johnson's still <laughs> pumping his legs like he's gotten... A parachute tied to his back, and that parachute is named Mitch Sampson. And it'll be third down and long. You know, folks, you see those drills where players are running with weights tied to them. If you ever wonder, what's the purpose of this? There's your purpose. Look at that, just no give up in Caden Johnson. You can tug all you want, man, but I'm not going down. He needed a tearaway jersey, and he gets the first there down. <laughs> Hagen, pressure coming from Tongyai. He's got Johnny Mitchell. Is a catch made? It is! Touchdown! Corner Canyon! It was Noah Kerr! The sophomore wide receiver, two-year starter, comes up with the touchdown. Fake the screen to Mitchell and hit Kerr on the wheel route. This is a great throw. Look at that, just laid in for Kerr to go up and get, and Mitchell, or excuse me, Hagen, Got hit on the play, too. A couple of Falcons were breathing down his neck. The junior able to stand in there, take the hit, and deliver a great ball. Lewis comes on for the point after. 5-0-3 left in the half. It is corner Canyon 10, Sky Ridge 0. You're watching the 5A state championship game on live.ksl and DeseretNews.com. Commentary brought to you by the Utah Army National Guard. Five oh three left in the half and corner canyon. Dane, this has been, I would say right now, with five minutes left, currently, I would put this as their most impressive half. And people would be looking and be like, they only have ten points. What are you talking about? Well, 
the defense. I mean, Dusty, the defense of Corner Canyon, that's the thing that surprises me, and, and this isn't a knock to Corner Canyon, but, but the success they've had against Sky Ridge, which has been an offense that has scored at will since week one. And a fast start offense. Yeah. Even when they lost to Riverton, they scored in like four plays on their first drive. And a mishandled kickoff inside the five-yard line, what could have been disastrous, is now going to be aided by a face mask. So on the return for Sky Ridge was Jackson Peck. Well, he does a nice job to salvage this. I mean, when he doesn't catch this cleanly, all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is in trouble. And they have a flag. I believe they threw a flag I on thought this. I saw a flag. The, the far line yeah, is holding goes. one. Yep. They threw it right there. There it is. I'll be that far side judge, Mike Reimer. One of the better umpires in the state of Utah, baseball umpires. Right on top of that. So it could have been inside the five yard line, ends up being first and 10 at the 30. Natoa in there, and it will have a false start. Actually, you can let him reset up. There it is. Well, That's delayed. They can let him, you can let him reset. Clemens could have and should have let him reset because then it just, yeah. Or James Palmer just needed to keep moving. As long as you move laterally, it would have been fine. So second and 15. Or probably first and 15. Get far yard marker swapped out there. Two receivers near side of him at the top of the screen. Clemens goes deep looking for up him. I'll tell you what, Schefter's done a great job. Schefter right there with him step for step, not letting him over the top. And it's now second and 15. Another miscommunication here. I mean, Upham is 15, 20 yards down the field, and Clemens thinks he's going that route. Instead, he breaks inside. Watch, this ball is thrown to the outside, and Upham is making an in route. Well, maybe not. I thought that ball landed further outside. <laughs> My bad. No, I, I agreed with you, too. I think he was throwing up the rail, and he ran to the post. And we go to Natoa. No, Clemens pulls. And Clemens spilled by Scheffner. Scheffner is having a great first half. He is. I mean, you look at this matchup, and for me, I was like, I don't quite know who Corner Kane is, can stick on Nate Upham. He's got great length, good speed, and Scheffner's been that guy. Look at him. Just never gets engaged in the block, is able to come off Upham, bring down Clemens for just a, a gain of four. But he's been solid in coverage. You mentioned it in the last play. He hasn't given up anything deep, been stride for stride with Upham since the first play of the game. Third down, 11 for Sky Ridge. Three down front from the Chargers. Pressure comes off the edge. Clemens to up him. He's got it. First down. Only the second completion of the day for Clemens. Both of them the way of up him. That's a nice grab to get those toes down before stepping out. Big first down here for Sky Ridge. Can they put together a drive, Dusty, in these last couple minutes of the half? It'd go a long way toward changing the energy in that locker room. First and 10 from the 42. Back on the ground. RPO, rather. And there's a catch. Ty Arrington. And here come the Falcons. First and 10 at the 44 of Corner Canyon. They love this RPO game. They have ever since the inception of the football program, Dusty. And a nice job getting the ball out to Arrington to move the sticks again. Back-to-back -back completions for first downs for the Sky Ridge Falcons. And it'll be Natoa near side and nothing doing. Natoa blown up and dropped by Caden Johnson. It'll be second and long. That perimeter just defended. I mean, there's nowhere to go. If Johnson wa wasn't there, Wilson would have been. And Natoa and Wilson, they might, they're going to end up doing a podcast together as much time as they're spending <laughs> today. <laughs> Second down and nine for the Falcons. 
Three minutes remaining in the first half. Falcons looking to respond. Clemens chased out of the pocket, fires deep. Got a man, makes the adjustment, makes the grab. Dylan Samuels has it first and goal, Falcons. By the way, four, three straight completions for Jaden Clemens, all of them over 10 yards. He's starting to get in that rhythm, and this is a fantastic job by Samuels making a great adjustment with that ball in the air to come back and make the reception. This big Sky Ridge crowd ready to explode on a score. Natoa the deep back. Here is Ma'a. And he got Na'a. Oh, he got one ah. Come on, Dusty. And forward progress is an interesting thing from this angle. It gets a yard of the six. Man, that how was about a that generous job? yard. Well, on the interior, trying to get that full number there, but does a great job coming around the block, able to wrap up Natoa from behind and bring him down. Second and goal. Quick throw going to Upham. And Scheffner going to call for pass interference. Half the distance to the goal. It's not an automatic first down, but it'll put him at the three yard line. The right call here. You see Upham trying to get outside and just breaks him off of the route. A good call from the officials there, the PI. So move the ball to the three, and it'll be second and goal. Remember, no personal foul. There is not an automatic first down penalty in high school football. One of the things to change from your understanding of Saturdays and Sundays. Natoa the deep back, and they'll go to Natoa. Ma'a pushing his way, and he's turned back at the goal line. Wow. Put him at the one. Third and goal. Great effort here from Natoa. I thought he was going to get it after that spin. Look at this corner canyon front. Just no give up in the Chargers. I think he's short. Good spot. Third and goal. Back. No, it's Clemens on the pull. And Clemens in the end zone. Touchdown, Sky Ridge. Is that the drive that gets the Falcons going, Dusty? Looked so impressive. Big plays through the air. That zone read. And Clemens able to take on Bell to leap into the end zone for the touchdown. Impressive drive, 70 yards. And able to cap it off in the end zone. What's been a frustrating first half for this offense. And the point after is good. 128 left in the half. We got a ball game. Corner Canyon leads 10 to 7. Skyward just got on the board. You watch the 5A championship game on live.ksl and deseretnews.com. Sky Ridge had their best drive of the game. Needless to say, gets in the end zone, making this a three-point ball game. Corner Canyon gets the ball at the half, so interesting to see how they decide to play this. Scheffner will take it from the five. Scheffner's got big playability. Here goes John Scheffner. To the 40, and Scheffner run out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. How about the response from Corner Canyon? Well, I think they're going to play it aggressive. <laughs> Great return here by Scheffner. And I thought on this return, the kicker probably took a more aggressive angle than he should have. You see him coming in right there. The stutter step by Scheffner opened up an additional 30-plus yards 
and Corner Canyon now. Hey, we talked about Skyridge. Is that the, the drive that gets them some momentum? Here's a chance for Corner Canyon to seize it. Hagen, quick set, fired. Noah Karen, it's intercepted. How about the play turned in from Nico Toilolo? Talk about being in the right place at the right time. I mean, Hagen's trying to fit in a tight window. It looks open, but Toilolo just has that fall right in the bread basket and goes to the ground. Big play by Skyridge, and now how aggressive will the Falcons be, Dusty? As aggressive as they can be, in my opinion. You got all, you got all Uncle Mo. the momentum, yep. Uncle Mo sitting on your shoulder. And three timeouts. Three timeouts, and you know Corner Cannon gets the ball. How about the swing of momentum? Scheffner had the big return, then the turnover. Clemens rolls near side, going deep. Upham's down there with Scheffner, battling, and that's a tough call to go against Scheffner. If that's going against Scheffner, that is a really tough call because he has every right to that space. Well, the problem is, is that the ball's underthrown. Upham's trying to get back to the football, and I think that is going to be the Skyridge case. Corner Kane was signaling offensive pass interference. They're going to go against Corner Canyon. Dusty, here's my thing. I don't know... To me, when I look at this, I think Upham's trying to come back inside. But there's nothing that says that Scheffner has to give him inside because the ball's thrown inside. Well, it's the same thing with the back shoulder. When a receiver comes back to the ball and a DB doesn't let him, you see the penalty flag thrown then, too. What's the difference? I don't know if we got to look on that one. If we can see that one. but uh, It's hard. Ball wasn't thrown. <laughs> Either way, 15-yard penalty. <laughs> Because I want people thinking I care who gets a call, who doesn't. I really don't. I just think that's a tough one. Well, I don't think either one of them knew where the ball was. I'm not saying I like it. I'm saying that's how I've seen it ruled, called in other situations that, I, yeah. in my opinion, are similar. And that pass falls incomplete, second down and 10. Prior to that last one, Dusty, I mean, we talk about the, the hot streak for Clemens. He was three of his last three for 63 yards. Wow. Wow. I mean, that was that last drive. As we mentioned when Skyridge gets in the flow and the motion, their offense can be as dynamic as anyone. Still have all three timeouts with that penalty. And make you sure, because I know there's a lot of Skyridge folks on our stream right now. If you've watched our videos, you know, I don't really care about picks being right or wrong. I yeah. I really don't. Second down and 10, 58 seconds to go in the half. Clemens. Fires over the middle. Got a man, Ty Arrington. First and 10 at the 40. Add another 17 to that. Now four of his last five for 80. And Ty Arrington has been fantastic. Dusty has picked it up here in this first half. He's been the guy has been the leading target for Skyridge, the leading receiver. Clemens steps up in the pocket, fires for up him, back shoulder incomplete. And again, I hate to keep harping on it. We'll keep going back because this could be a close game. The touchdown taken away when John Mitchell had a touchdown and it was correctly called, blocking the back, what wasn't necessary, is, and had no points on the drive. It would have been, at that point, 9 nothing, possibly 10. This could be 17-7 to seven at the moment. And, you know, you think about this game, Dusty. I mean, Skyridge was really dormant except for the last three minutes. Absolutely. The last three minutes of this half, just like last year's semifinal game. As here goes Clemens. First down inside the 25. Mark him at the 25. And all the momentum, and they're feeling it. Great call here. I love it. Talk about Clemens, his dynamic nature in this offense, and now a timeout. Timeout on the field. 33 seconds to go in the half. You're watching the 5A championship game.
33 seconds to go. Clemens firing deep, got a man. Broken, intercepted. How about this interception at the goal line? Going the other way. Near the 40. And how about the pick? From Corner Canyon's number 21, Andrew McDonald. Wow. That's a huge play. You see the double pump, and this looks wide open, and McDonald covers a third of the field. Fantastic job coming back for that pick. Has a nice return. I presume that <laughs> Corner Canyon likely going to be pretty conventional in their offense here. But, wow. I mean, what a great way to turn the momentum here for Corner Canyon. And it's Caden Johnson on the zone read, and Johnson gets out toward the 45-yard line, and timeout taken. Timeout Corner Canyon, 11 seconds left in the half. Let's take another look at this play by McDonald. Hard to appreciate the closing speed oh. by McDonald on that one, Dusty, because, again, when Clemens makes that first pump, I'm like, oh, that is wide open. McDonald being able to recover, pick that off. I mean, that right there is a seven-point swing. I mean, that should be a touchdown. And uh, a fantastic job by McDonald just taking it away. What a fun first half here in the 5A championship game as uh, this second half is going to be bonkers. Absolutely. Or as uh, we would have said 10 years ago, bananas. <laughs> what is it? B-A-N-A. B-A-N-A-N-A. -A -A, right? <laughs> B A N A N A. I'm not a cheerleader. <laughs> I'm not a cheerleader, man. Never was, never will be. My I, wife makes fun of me because I watch a game and my face never changes. I'm just stoic. Like, I've got no hey, cheering. I only hear Kelly Kapoor's voice in my head when I talk about that. <laughs> uh. Put 13 seconds remaining in the half. They put two seconds back on the clock. Two by two formation for Hagen. Skyridge bringing pressure. Hagen rolling far side. Got plenty of time. Throwing deep, got a receiver and defender, and broken up. And now four seconds left. There's Noah Carey, but he'll break that one up. Is it could have been intercepted by Jackson Peck? He was sizing this one up, Dusty, just like a center fielder. But unlike a center fielder, had some contact come to break that ball away. And look at him; he's just sitting back there at the 20. It was like it's a punt return. Nice job by Care, as you mentioned, to break that ball up and separate it. Final play of the half, barring a penalty. And he'll keep it on the ground with Caden Johnson. And Johnson goes inside the 40-yard line, and that'll do it for the first half of play. What a fun 24 minutes we had. We've got 24 minutes coming up. Halftime score, Corner Canyon 10, Sky Ridge 7. You're watching the 5A Championship game on live.ksl and deseretnews.com. Commentary brought to you by the Utah Army National Guard and Tosh, your orthopedic specialty hospital. We'll be back after halftime.
Welcome back inside of Rice Eccles Stadium. Dusty Litster and Dane Stewart of Deseret News Rewind with you. It was a 10 to seven lead for Corner Canyon at the half and they will get the ball first on a game that uh, neither team are on their average offensively, but their defenses continue to be very stingy and very timely with the way they've stood up, Dana. And not only that, this has been an evenly played game. I mean, Dusty, that was the thing that stood out to me when, when you know, you go and you have an opportunity to get stats at the half. I mean, you look at this. Let me just read off a few stats for you. First downs, Corner Canyon 9, Sky Ridge 8. Total yards, Corner Canyon 146, Sky Ridge 138. How about third down conversions? Both teams, 3 of 7. Time of possession, Sky Ridge 1219, Corner Canyon 1141. Both teams 100% inside the red zone. I mean, these are the two best teams in 5A, and that first half, they played like it. And another offside, so two penalties on the kickoff. And uh, Corner Canyon is going to have good field position no matter what happens here. The kicker getting frustrated with the official, and he's like, look, he's offsides. So we'll do it again as they are now backed up to their own 30. It'll be interesting to watch what happens here. I mean, down the that end of the first half, you had the, the great kickoff from Scheffner, who's back deep. Uh, then an interception by Toy Lolo. A good drive. Looks like Skyridge is going to take a lead. And then an interception from Corner Canyon. As this is taken on the hop and down the sideline as Caden Johnson has every bit of the ability to take that thing the distance. Goes out of bounds at the 42. Probably about as good of a job as you could have done given the situation you were in, right? You certainly don't want to give up a return to Scheffner. He returned one big earlier or back in that first half. Trying to kind of keep that ball along the sideline, not let it go out of play. But even with all that being said, Corner Canyon starts at their own 42. Great opportunity here for the Chargers to start the second half. Hagen starts on the zone read and nicely done by this Sky Ridge defense. A loss of a yard to the 41. Neither of these fan bases need a reminder. But in case you're not a fan of either team and you're just watching for the entertainment, it was a 17-point game last year in the semis. Corner Canyon had the lead, and Skyridge came back in the second half to win that. This game's certainly not out of the realm of possibility from either side, especially given uh, what both offenses showed in that first half. Hagen to throw. Has time, now fires deep. Making the adjustment, and it's wide to the intended receiver, John Mitchell. He put on the sleeves at the half. It's a little cold down on the field and up here. Yeah, I've had the sleeves on all day. I had the space heater running all afternoon, or all day today. Yeah, that's the real MVP of championship day, has <laughs> been the space heater. You know, one of the things we've seen a couple times where Corner Canyon is starting to stretch this ball or trying to stretch this ball down the field, and Peck has been able to kind of play center field. If, if you're going to do that, I would love to have a, a deep route over the middle. Instead, you're allowing these safeties really to provide two-man coverage. Hagen got time, fires incomplete. And I thought he might have had a man open. But it'll be a three and out for Corner Canyon on the opening drive of the second half. Got an official, and I have to chuckle. All in good fun. He's struggling with the sticks over there. Far sideline ran over the first down marker and then trying to come back on the field. Got tripped up in the chains. Kept his footing, though. He's extremely athletic. <laughs> Been a good punting effort from the first half as this one's taken on the short by one of the up men, and that was Jackson Peck, I believe. And Peck dropped at the 26-yard line. And it'll be Clemens in the offense coming on for their first possession of the second half. Jaden Clemens got started slowly, but Dane ended that half with a blistering pace. I mean, he threw the interception, but Dustin, you look at the last two drives for Sky Ridge, and this looked like the offense that we expected to see coming into this ball game. Big gains. Had four completions in those last two drives. All of them were greater than 13 yards. That's the type of effectiveness that this offense can have and see if they can carry that over to the second half. 
There's Natoa on the ground and not much there. And that has been the biggest shock of this game. That's Natoa's 11th cat, or carry that in the first half, 10 carries, 12 yards. Yeah. I'm right on target. That's the same number I had. And that was one of the things that surprised me. I really thought Skyers would be able to run the ball more effectively than they did. How's this for another stat at halftime? 53 yards rushing for Corner King, 52 for Sky Ridge. Just once again, <laughs> these two teams been neck and neck all game. As you mentioned earlier, it was a 24-7 deficit in the second half of last year's game. I don't know if we're going to see that here today. As we go zone read, fire out near side, and luckily that was a forward pass. It'll be third down and eight. And you know, a name that we have not called a lot today offensively is Palmer. I was thinking the same thing. Dusty had a huge game in that semifinal. I mean, he was the guy for Sky Ridge, and here today, I don't even know if he's been targeted. I can't think of one target his way. Third down and eight. Trips near side, one receiver at the top of the screen. And I believe that is Nate Upham. Corner Canyon showing a five-man pressure. And they bring five. Picked up. Clemens throws deep. Up him. I think correctly, he pulled up there yeah. as Scheffner was playing him over the top. And it'll be a three and out for Sky Ridge. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Scheffner's done a great job today. We talked about that in the first half of not allowing Up him to beat him. And I think it's the right read by Up him there to just get to the sticks. What would have been a first down, but Clemens was looking for a ball along the sideline. And Seen that miscommunication a couple times where players on have different reads there. Scheffner back deep for this punt. Nice high kick. Takes a Sky Ridge bounce inside the 30. And it'll be Corner Canyon football at the 28 yard line. Timeout on the field. 9.57 remaining in the third quarter. It'll be Corner Canyon football when we come back on the 5A championship game on live.ksl and DesireNews.com. The commentary brought to you by Tosh, the Orthopedic Specialty Hospital. Nine fifty-seven to go in the third quarter. Outcome Hagen and the Chargers are second possession of the second half. Play action going for Care. He's wide open. Noah Care down the sideline and out of bounds at the thirty-five. First and ten, Chargers. Mark him out at the thirty-three. Care has a touchdown and now this play. He just gets lost here, Dusty. No one has Noah Care. Great protection, but look at that wide open and not quite certain if one of those backers was supposed to follow him certainly appeared as though that was the case everyone else was way downfield big gain for corner canyon here to start off it's after the big play hagan quarterback draw inside the 30 dives to the 33 or pardon me, 28. I get lost sometimes. And uh, second down and six. Caden Johnson spins out of a tackle. Johnson still on his feet. And they'll mark him forward progress to the 24. And it'll be third down and one. And now we got an injured player on the field. And I believe that's Handley. Well, he's not moving that right leg at all. Uh, he might have a cramp. Oh, well, maybe not. As they will tend to Talma Chanley will step aside. You're watching the 5A championship game.
Hanley got up and he's okay. They're still, they went to a TV timeout. We'll step aside and we'll come right back. You're watching the 5A championship game. Welcome back. Hanley was able to get off the field. They'd be helped off. Third down and one. And it is Johnson in the backfield along with Hagen. And it's Johnson on the call. He doesn't get much but didn't need much. Gets to the 22. And that is a first down for Corner Canyon. As he was wrapped up by Logan Sangapalu. Saw Corner Canyon quite intent on running the ball to start this ball game. Good to see them go back to that ground game, try to keep that balance, especially on a third and short. Mitchell in motion before receivers near side. And I think a false start. Ball start on Corner Canyon, make it first and 15. I was excited to see that play. <laughs> it looked like there was some creativity <laughs> there, huh? He had four receivers to this near side after Mitchell goes in motion because that makes the tackle eligible at the top of the screen. I was kind of excited to see if you're going to see a throwback. So they made Jonah Strong the end man of the line of scrimmage. Hagen, pressure came right through. He takes off. And then has to dive inside the 25-yard line. And this is a great display of Hagen's athleticism. Look at Togiai coming and Hagen able to slip past him. Great job again outside the pocket. Only a gain of two, but really Cole Hagen's done a nice job today by and large of escaping some of this pass rush. Hagen going to throw deep. He's got John Mitchell. Goes up. Johnny Mitchell has it. And it's a Corner Canyon touchdown. John Mitchell from Cole Hagen. This play is made outside the end zone. Right about now, Johnny Mitchell switches to the inside. That lane was given up by the Sky Ridge defender. And if you allow Mitchell the inside, over. Uses that big body and basketball background to box him out and get that touchdown. 7.58 to go in the third, and it's 16 to 7 in favor of Corner Canyon. As they're running guys on for the point after. And something big is Corner Canyon has to take a timeout in a game that will be close. They only have two timeouts remaining in the half. As the play clock was down to three, as guys were not on the field, ready to go. But what a response there from Corner Canyon to come back and get that score, Dane, because their defense came out, did its job, and then this offense able to go right down the field. Yeah, and, and an impressive job, Dusty, especially where you know their first drive of the second half went a three and out, and you have Hagen making big plays, able to find Johnny Mitchell and a great job. How about Coach Care? Good to see that he doesn't always wear shorts. It's a night game. It's November. <laughs> Typically, Coach Care has got much better to find calves than I do. But uh, tonight, they're under wraps, trying to stay insulated on the sideline there. Absolutely. Looking for his second state championship as a head coach. Won one a few years back, 2013, with Austin Kofensis. As the point after is up. And good. 7.58 to go in the third quarter, and it's Corner Canyon 17, Sky Ridge 7. You're watching the 5A championship game on live.ksl and deseretnews.com.
So now comes Corner Canyon to kick it away after the touchdown to John Mitchell. Gives them a 10-point advantage. And this will be taken at the goal line. 80-yard field ahead of Jaden Clemens and this offense. They've got to respond. And there's times where we feel like, here we come, right at the end of the half. Remember the last two possessions, they had the interception at the goal line. And uh, this, because this offense has the ability to explode at any moment. Yeah, it does. Um, and, you know, for me, I'm a big fan of establishing the ground game. I still believe that you got to do that. I wonder if you start to work with Clemens a little bit. We saw them move the ball, some of that zone read, also some draws from Clemens in that second quarter. I'm looking to try to get Clemens into this game on the ground. Start with Natoa. Natoa bottled up, and once again, it is Wilson coming up to get the stop. But it was really because the edge was set nicely by Cade McDougal. 12 carries, 16 yards. <laughs> and I think he was the leading rusher in 5A this year. Yep. Wow. Just, this is a very underappreciated yeah. Corner Canyon defense. Might not have the Mikey Petties and some of the, and Blake Emery's on it, the names we knew, but they got a bunch of guys to do their jobs. As Clemens, how about doing your job here? Clemens turns chicken, chicken scratch into chicken soup, and it's first and ten. Actually, no, they're going to mark him just short. Yeah, picked up eight. Nice run here by Clemens, and this is what I'd love to see more from Skyridge is find a way to use Clemens' athleticism to pick up some yards, get you in short down situations. And that's just what Clemens did there on second and long. And Newcomer had him in the backfield, and he got away. It's third down and one. By the way, Van Fillinger's on that defensive line rolling his eyes after your last comment, Dusty. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> and it's Ma'anatoa. First down. Gets to the 31. You're right. When you're right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> First and 10, Skyridge. Going back to Natoa. And again, this is more about trying to win that battle of attrition over you know 48 minutes and it's going to be a quarterback run Wilson in there to get the stop and so uh, Josh Wilson's had himself a ball game yeah. tonight it's been all over Dusty and you know I think some of Wilson's year has been overshadowed a little bit because Caden Johnson was a junior last year, was that Region 7 MVP. There was so much expected from Caden this year, and he's lived up to that. But so much focus on 30, people haven't really noticed 34. And Josh Wilson has been spectacular all year. As Clemens able to slip out of one tackle, he's not able to slip out of Wilson's tackle, working it from sideline to sideline, and it'll be third down and one once again for Sky Ridge as once Again, Clemens working the zone read very, very well. Yeah, and, and they are trying to get that run game going here a little bit, trying to establish it, pick up a six that time for the quarterback. The toe of the deep back. Going to check with the sideline. Going a little more of the Oklahoma State offense here in the third quarter, well, especially on this drive. As that snap goes wide to the left, Clemens able to stab it, and that's going to cost them a first down opportunity. Remember in the semifinals, the snaps are off the mark time and time again. They have been on point until right there. And Austin Bell's going to come up. You see him right there, number 10. And no one able to get a helmet on Bell. Allows him to come up and stifle Clemens while the rest of this Charger D comes and helps make the assist. But, I mean, even that little snap delay is enough because Notoa gets, comes up, and now you're just built on stopping the run allows bell to come up close down the gap and that's uh that's it for the drive and a snap off the mark on the punt and it'll be corner canyon football inside the 30 yard line i think this was a fake i think this was a fake punt tony i put his hands up there and he's the one who touched this snap dusty like he was gonna run it on fourth and two And it gets stopped. And it, yeah, if it was a fake, if it was a fake punt, the snap still off the mark. It was as above the shoulders yep. to Tony I. So that one backfires. It'll be first and ten 
for Corner Canyon at the 29. 10 seconds now on the play clock. Mitchell, the top receiver at the top of the screen. It'll be Bell on first down, and Bell runs into a wall, but he does get three yards to the 26-yard line. It'll be second down and medium as we got a flag at the end of that play. This is a post-play penalty. Another short field here for Corner Canyon after the stop on fourth down. But this is a 15-yard penalty against Corner Canyon. Going to hurt that. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Sky Ridge. So this is going to be a 15-yard penalty. Put him at the 10-yard line. So we get another look at what happened here. I had missed it. Looks like that play has stood up. See any action continuing? And Let's see if we can maybe catch it. something said. Had to be something said because you see the official look backwards to players behind him and throw that flag. I'm guessing it was something verbal. And if it was Antonio, I believe he would be ejected. He'd be disqualified from the game. Well, I didn't see a disqualification announcement, did you? I didn't, and I just saw Tony come off the field. That's he what is I'm on the guessing. sideline now. I hope that's not the case. But it is first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Give to Bell, give the Bell in the zone read. And uh, I'll tell you what, a name we don't talk about enough today is Tonavasa. Yeah, yeah, he's had a nice game today, Dusty. And just looking down, and Tony I is at the edge of the player box. Taking off his pads. He had that personal, or the unsportsmanlike conduct at the beginning in the first quarter as Hagen gets his ball on the edge. Here's Bell. Touchdown, Corner Canyon. Austin Bell gets in the end zone. And it's now 23 to 7 with 413 left in the third. Skyridge sells out on that one. Great blocking. Up front, you see the lineman pulling out for the screen. And and Lewis comes on for the point after. You can't see it right now, but Skyridge technically has 12 men on the field. And no one catches it. I'm not certain if this is an informal protest or what. Well, no penalty flag. So 4-13 left in the third quarter. And Corner Canyon opened this one up 24-7. You're watching the 5A championship game on live.ksl and deseretnews.com. Commentary brought to you by the Utah Army National Guard. Four minutes and 13 seconds left in the third quarter in Corner Canyon. Opening this one up and a, only bringing it up because of a year ago. It was 24 to 7 in, I believe, the fourth quarter. Yeah, I don't recall at what point. But all of a sudden, Sky Ridge found something that worked. And it was that flag route, Dusty, from the slot that they That's just right. started hitting. Play and play again once for 85 yards. Uh, you know, and this is, but this is a different Corner Canyon defense. I mean, I was talking with someone at halftime, and it's like this Corner Canyon defense is not last year's defense. 
I mean, right now it's three possessions. It, it could be more. Remember, a touchdown came off the board. Skyridge, that offense, they've got to find a way to get it going. Taken from the one-yard line, and Palmer pinballs his way to the 21. And then we got flags coming in at the end of that play. We've had a lot of post-play penalties. Well, oh, apparently that wasn't a toa on the return. We've had a lot of penalties post-plays here. We'll see who this one's on. Might be on Corner Canyon. And actually ripped off Natoa's face or helmet at the end yeah. of that play. Bounces off of one man. Trying to see where that face mask comes from in the replay here. Yeah, you see right there, oh, there was man. a player that just ripped that up. And when he's down, got three more, yards. Got a more wits about you than that. As go zone read and Clemens is brought down from behind. It was Caden Johnson getting the stop there for Corner Canyon. Haven't been able to establish Natoa. And right now that zone read is really the life that this offense is clinging to in terms of the run game for Sky Ridge. I don't know that he's completed a pass here in the second half, Dusty. I'm trying to think. According to stats, I've only got him with one attempt and it was incomplete. Clemens, broken play, fires up the sideline, incomplete. That ball intended for Dylan Samuels. And on the defense was Quinn Andra. He had up him down the middle of the field. Had him, well, had the corner canyon defense beat. And I just don't think Clemens saw it the opportunity they've been waiting for. They've tried to get Upham engaged down the field one-on-one, -on -one, and that time they had him. Upham made a nice move down the field to just start running the vertical, but Clemens couldn't connect. Two-by-two two formation, third down and seven. Clemens, pressure coming. Rolls near side, fires near side, got his man. First down, and the man that had a big game last week, James Palmer with his first reception. Well, Skyridge needed that. I actually thought that Clemens could have tucked the ball and ran for that first down, instead able to find Palmer. And again, what's going to be that play, Dusty, to start the momentum going for Skyridge? Could that be it, a big third down conversion? First down, Clemens going deep. Got up him. Incomplete. Fans wanting a flag, not coming. Scheffner on the defense along with Bell and interested to see another look at that. There is a flag near side at about the 39 near the boundary. Well aware from any, or well away from any play. I'm guessing it's going to be a holding or a passing. Or, yeah, probably oh, yeah. a holding at some point. But Well, that one's downfield. There's another flag. Oh, it's a sideline warning called on Skyridge. Boy, that's not going to go over well with the fans. And I actually agree. I think Scheffner had him there. Scheffner's grabbing on that arm. Yeah. He also, I thought that there was an opportunity for Clemens to come near side to Palmer. Was, we'll have another look here at the play down the field. See him hanging on that arm. Yeah. Second down and 10. And it's Clemens on the zone read, gets around the edge, and Clemens popped on his way down as he was brought down by Cade McDougal. And it'll be third down and about four, I believe. Another look I actually thought would have been an opportunity for Natoa. Was defended well. Wilson had the gap instead, so Clemens able to keep it. Delivered a nice hit there at the end of the run. And Quinn Andrew also in on that stop. Third down and four. I believe you're two downs territory here. Corner Canyon was showing pressure from Wilson. No safety in the middle of the field. There's a chance to go up the rail. One second on the play clock. G no, did not get it off in time. Delay a game. 
against Sky Ridge. Going to make this third and nine. They were trying to check a lot of stuff at the line of scrimmage, showing blitzes, all kinds of stuff. You know, one of the interesting things, Dusty, I really thought Nate Upham had an opportunity to be a difference maker in this game. Corner Canyon has taken him away singularly with the defense of Scheffner. Ah. And when we talk about this run defense for Corner Canyon, one of the reasons why it's been successful is because they've been able to lock down Nate Upham with man coverage, single coverage, all game long. Clemens looking near side, going near side. Got a man, makes a grab inside the five, down to the one. Dylan Samuels. And just as he did in the end of the first half, he makes another big play. We've talked about they haven't engaged Palmer very frequently in this game. Dusty, there's always a young man who can stand up for this Sky Ridge offense. And Upham gets a lot of the talk, but they've got a lot of great receivers. And that's a fantastic grab. What a throw by Clemens. Just dropped that right over the defense. Natoa in the backfield. He's a deep back, and they go to him. Natoa, touchdown, Falcons. What a response from this offense. The catch by Samuels, a touchdown from Natoa. Boy, they needed that. I mean, words can't describe how big that catch is. And Natoa able to finish it off. Life still on that Sky Ridge sideline. Breathing life back into this ball game, and all of a sudden you start thinking, oh, last year it was 24 to 7. <laughs> Remember, you said, I don't know if we'll get to that. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the extra point is up, and it is good. 158 left in the third. Sky Ridge back in this ball game within two scores. You're watching the 5 8 championship game on live.ksl and desiretnews.com. And they're going to pooch kick this to keep it away from Scheffner. Fair catch taken. It'll be corner canyon football at the 25-yard line. So out comes Hagen in the offense for corner canyon. Not a time, in my opinion, take your foot off the pedal. You've got to keep playing your game, not worry about clock, time, and distance. No, I completely agree. This game far from over. I mean, I, and I think Corner Canyon obviously has memories of last year. They don't need a reminder of that. To me, it's go back to running the football. And it's Caden Johnson across the 30-yard line. You know, the remarkable thing, Dusty, it's not like Corner Canyon has ran for 100 yards today. I mean, Caden Johnson, I have him nine carries, 48 yards. Austin Bell, seven carries, 22 yards. And neither of those are going to leap off the screen at you. But it's just that consistent nature of the offense and just keeping in that rhythm. And Johnson's in pain down the field. And while they attend to him, we'll step aside. You're watching the 5A championship game. Oh, pops right up. Never mind. We don't need to go anywhere. So... And I was about to say, because Caden Johnson needs this game, it's not just the offense, it's what he brings as a linebacker. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's, he's been a real X factor this year for Corner Canyon, and uh, particularly in the playoffs. I mean, we've talked about that semifinal game last week against Olympus, and today he's been their leading ball carrier. And defensively, he's up there in terms of tackles. And between he and well, yeah, Wilson's having such a good game today but he's a leader he's a captain on this team
And I think this conversation is a frustrating one, and, and we'll try to be. I think they're trying to decide if Togiai needs to leave. He came back out, and he's just watching the game from beyond the end zone. And some event staff over there talking with him, but we'll play on. As Hagen goes RPO, and down he goes. Tanuvasa gets in there and gets the sack. He's been a beast today, Dusty. I mean, you mentioned it. He's been fantastic for Sky Ridge, and when they've needed a big play, he comes up and makes a nice one there. Had nowhere to go, did Cole Hagen. And nowhere to go with the football either. Third and long, Hagen. Up the sideline looking for Mitchell, and it's wide and incomplete. So the defense does its job, and Dane, it's going to be good field position for Clemens in the offense. Ain't over. You can, you can argue Skyridge has them right where they want them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because he got 24-7, I, you know. Yeah, yeah. We've seen this before. It's out to punt it away. He's corner canyon, high snap, and just had to get it away and does. End over end kick that takes a Sky Ridge bounce and is downed. And out comes the offense for Sky Ridge. Found rhythm at the end of that last drive, and it's fan base trying to get them going. 55 seconds to go in the third quarter, and with a solid drive and a score, Dane, this will be a one-score game. Just like that. And Dusty, we've seen Sky Ridge be able to move the ball just like that. Big opportunity for Corner Kane in this defense to try to stand up and get some momentum back for uh, those in the blue and silver. Uncle Moe sitting on the shoulder of Sky Ridge. Let's see what Clemens got. Start on the ground. Clemens on the zone read. He's not able to break that tackle. He's able to get close to the first, or pardon me, the line of scrimmage. But a nice job on the outside by Corner Canyon's number 55, Keenan Iono. Man, they've played this so well today. I mean, every time it seems like Jane Clements has rarely had an opportunity to get past the line of scrimmage without some form of contact. And we talked about how key that was in the semi last week, and today Corner Canyon's been ready. Second and long. Clemens going to Samuels again. And incomplete. And no flag. He wants it, not getting it. On the defense for Corner Canyon's Quinn Andra. And Samuels needs to be careful. Well, the bench needs to be careful, too. Coach Lehman telling him, get back to the line of scrimmage. Give him an earful. You can be frustrated that. Let's have another look at it. I mean, I don't know. Hey, right there, he's got lucky. Third down and nine. 16 seconds to go in the third. Charger fans making noise. Clemens steps up, puts it on the mark, and incomplete. Now a flag comes out. I don't know about this one. Might have had an argument the one before. This one, I think it was a clean play by Bell to knock the ball loose. Well, this might be a targeting hit. This might be a targeting penalty. Oh, you think it's a helmet to helmet? That's what I'm wondering. I'll tell you this. I, I, thought, pass I thought Clemens could have tucked the ball and ran for the first down. And oh. They're calling a pass interference, wow. and I don't think that yeah. was a pass interference. I don't either. I thought their contact came in up high. Do we have another look at it? No, that's well timed. Perfectly timed by Bell. Yeah. But I think also thinking he might have missed one to play before. Yeah. You know, officials are human too, right? Yeah. They don't like being yelled at. And. Um, that might be a little bit of an evening of the place. And only that, I think I could have thrown on the one before. So yeah. that one was close. Yeah. Bang, bang. I thought it was a tough one. But either way, first and ten. Here goes Natoa. His longest carry of the game, Dane. Eight yards. How about that? But it's just that feeling. He's going to get going. You're not going to hold down the best running back in 5A the entire game. At 1.2 yards to carry. We head to the fourth quarter. Corner Canyon 24, Sky Ridge 14. 
and it'll be Skyridge football when we come back. You're watching the 5A championship game on live.ksl and deseretnews.com. Start of the fourth quarter, the final quarter of the 2018 football season in the state of Utah, the 5A championship game. And I think we are set for quite the finish. Second down and two. Clemens fakes the pitch and has the first down and more inside the 25-yard line. Actually, mark him at the 25. First and 10, Falcons love this and I'm not sure if this is a call or a read but a fantastic job by Clemens that time just seeing a hold the left side of the line and picking up eight and we got a stoppage here I don't know. they keep looking over at the TV or at least in that direction. Oh, were we still in TV time? I shoot the so we're going to have to replay that down, I, I think, anyway. But no. they didn't pull it dead, and now we're back. So confusion there with the TV timeout and everything else. So I you hope we're not playing that down. If <laughs> there was only a red hat on the field, like a literal red. Yeah. Well, I won't go into criticizing that stuff on uh, on air, but uh, here we go. <laughs> three. I, I just mean like the oh, color yeah, to stand yeah. out, you know. Trips to the near side, one receiver at the top of the screen. First and ten at the twenty-five. Hot snap and uh, Clemens coming near side, trying to reverse field, and he's blown up in the backfield. Josh Wilson once again with a stop, but also got to give credit to Brett Iverson as well on that stop. Second down and 13. Clemens has started to gain a lot of momentum with that ground game. And good on corner Kane for being able to find a way to bring him down behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like he was pulling up, almost like he was ready to try to make a throw there. Able to be wrapped up for the loss. Upham isolated near side. Clemens looking for Upham. Goes to him. Back shoulder incomplete. Working through that cover two. And it'll be third down and 13. Well, this is a tight window for Clemens to try to fit this ball in. And I know that, you know, there's only so many different adjustments you can make in a game like this, especially late, but that middle of the field's wide open. If up and goes to that middle, nobody's home. And that's where it is on cover two. Cover two, you attack the middle right. of the field. They're trying to throw in that space between the corner and safety on that route. Two by two formation, third down and 13. Clemens stepping up in the pocket and taking off. He gets a block and has a first down inside the 15. First and goal inside the 10. How about Jaden Clemens? A 20 yard run here for Clemens and a great job. Didn't see any openings that he liked to throw that football. This is that dual nature that we talked about. He burned Roy last week with the run game, and some of those were called. Some of those were off of passing plays, getting out of the pocket, and that time able to pick up a huge conversion for a first. Knocking on the door. Natoa pushes inside the five, and it will be second and goal from the four. And just like that, they're back. <laughs> Sky Ridge can make this a three-point game. 
It's remarkable. And the crazy thing is the symmetry from a year ago. Yeah. Natoa set behind Clemens, working behind Ainsworth. Natoa. What a job by Bell. I thought that that edge was secure. I thought Clemens was going to walk in, and not so much. Bell, the only man who has a shot, does a great job of wrapping up Clemens. And I misread that zone read. Third and goal from the two. Going to check at the line of scrimmage. Ten seconds on the play clock. Clemens goes into Toa and he's stoned at the line. It'll be fourth and goal from the two-yard line. You got to get three at one point. And their defense has been good. I think I go for it. Corner can, you're gonna go up full throat. Big crowd on hand on that far side and the Sky Ridge side gets going as well. Fourth and goal from the two yard line. Clemens fires, incomplete. Going for Samuels and on the defense for Corner Canyon's Andrew McDonald. Turnover on downs, Charger ball to two. Great job by McDonald. Look at that. Gets the inside. Has the opportunity to knock that away. That ball needs more air under it to get over the DB, or you need to go something in front. That play never had a shot. Basketball style. Play between your man and the ball. So it'll be first and ten from the two-yard line. Caden Johnson still on the sideline. Bad snap. Bell takes it. And he's got a lane. Bell across the 10 has a first down at the 13. Play could have been disastrous at the start. Turns into a first down. Nearly was. Bell does a nice job of getting around the edge. Getting some breathing room here for Corner Canyon to work with. And Corner Canyon, you necessarily wanted to start bleeding the clock, but you can start just take your time and not in a rush. Ten seconds on the play clock. Hagen throws a screen. Bell's got room in front. Bell up the sideline across the 30. And out of bounds at the 35. First and 10. Chargers at the 35. Great play call here for Corner Canyon. See those linemen down the field helping to block things up and just like that, two plays. And they've gone from their own two to the 35. 33 yards to Bell on the ground and through the air. And they'll back on the ground at number 10 as he gets out to the 43-yard line. You know, we're sitting above the Sky Ridge fans. It just feels a little deflated after they don't get that touchdown. Can Corner Canyon seize that and put this game away? Hagen up the sideline and incomplete. Looking for Cutter. And it'll be third and seven. Big play here for Sky Ridge. Up comes in on defense. Last game of the season, can't hold anything back now. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> 7.36 left in the fourth quarter. Mitchell, a near side receiver. And it'll be Hagen on the run. He's got it. First down, Chargers, as he gets out of bounds at the 48. Actually, mark him at the 47. But it'll be first and 10, Corner Canyon. Does that look like a junior back there? Dusty, this is a heady play by Cole Hagen. We mentioned first year full-time starter. He's led them to an undefeated season. And in the state championship game, you've got a third and long, and he's able to pick it up with his legs. Sets up a screen again. Here's Bell. Got blockers and a lane. Bell down the sideline. Cuts inside. And Bell 
keeps going toward the 20. And it's another big play for Bell at the 21. First and 10 Chargers. Bong, bong, <laughs> bong. Austin Bell's taking this game over. Like Caden Johnson did in the fourth quarter last week, this drive has been all about Austin Bell. And a touchdown here, I think, has the same outcome as that Caden Johnson drive last week. And it's Schefter now in the backfield with Caden Johnson on the sideline. A short gain, just trying to spell Blake Bell. And Schefter gets inside the 20 to the 18. Second down and seven. If you're Skyrid, you have to hold this to a field goal. Touchdown puts this, I think, in the books. Two by two formation. Kerr and Mitchell near side. Hagen. Goes for Kerr. Touchdown, Noah Kerr. The second touchdown for the sophomore wide receiver. The son of the coach with his second touchdown in the state championship. Third passing touchdown for Cole Hagen. What a drive for Corner Canyon. Particularly Cole Hagen. Does he have him three of four for 72 yards on that drive alone? Blake Bell started it. Austin Bell started it. Noah Kerr finished it. And it's a 17-point lead once again. There's a flag at the end of the kick. As the Chargers go back up, 17 points. 98 yards, Dane, and I think less than three minutes. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what time it was when I they took it was over. was the eight-minute mark. I thought I... it was 820, yeah, about two minutes. Yeah. It was a bell with a run, bell with the two screens. Big plays, Dusty. 32 22, 10, 18, 11. Big plays on that drive for Corner Canyon. So personal foul on Sky Ridge. Mitch Sampson picking that one up and he'll take it on the kick. Timeout on the field, 6.27 left in the fourth. Chargers lead 31-14 in the 5A state championship. Six twenty-seven left in the 5A state championship game. Corner Canyon up 31 to 14. A goal line stand, turn it right around around and go 98 yards and score. What could have been a three-point game, Dane, is now 17. That's a big drive. I mean, I said, in my opinion, that's the opportunity to really put this away, secure the first state championship. We knew it would be the first state championship for one of these two schools in football. And right now, it's certainly looking like it's going to be the boys from Draper. Remember the history. We mentioned it probably too many times for many people here, but the semifinal win a year ago for Sky Ridge over Corner Canyon for trailing by 17 points in the fourth quarter. 
Got to the state championship game. It was a tough night. Ran into the buzzsaw known as Cameron Cooper is. Jaden Clemens has been lifted in this game. Not on the field. That ball is wide of Nate Upham. We have a flag on the play and more likely a procedure penalty. But Emmett Call now in at quarterback. And I don't see Clemens. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking too. Second down, legal man downfield. So call in at quarterback, Natoa in the backfield with him. Pressure coming, fires, and that is complete. And on the catch for Sky Ridge is Ty Arrington. I'm still looking. Yeah, Schefter on the stop. Yeah, I've been looking too. I don't see him. Speaking of uh, Jaden Clemens. Rick Clemens got lifted in the state championship game last year as well. Throw over the middle and well behind a wide open. Up him. The most open up him has been all night and just misses him. As it'll now be fourth down and four. And with 613 left, there's no reason not to go for it. Two receivers to each side for Sky Ridge. Looking to keep this drive alive and their hopes alive as well. Call. Fires. And a flag comes out. It'll be a first down for Sky Ridge. So it'll be first and 10 at the 41 yard line as this will be pass interference. There were some personnel. In fact, yeah, I, I've just spotted Clemens. He's down on the bench right now. Got a couple of personnel around him. A couple of players have come over to check on him. I'm not quite certain what the uh, status is. So first and ten after the pass interference penalty against Schefter. Pump fake. Over the middle, he's got Upham, and Upham is upended there by Wilson. But it is another first down inside of Charger territory to the 47-yard line. Skyridge showing some nice fight here late. A couple nice first downs. One aided by a penalty. Call startling, starting to settle in here on the drive. Looking left, going left, and he's got Upham. And another first down to the 35. It's not the first time that route has been wide open. Remember, that, that was the one that called through behind up him just a couple plays ago. A little post here. And this time, call able to deliver an accurate ball and another first down. 5.35 on a rolling clock here in the fourth quarter. They have to move a little bit quicker. Call looks left, goes for up him. He threw it outside, up him and broken inside. And luckily, it falls incomplete. Second and 10. And quite a season here for Sky Ridge. Lost her first game of the year, and since then, been a buzz saw run right through. Well, Pretty Lone much Peak. everyone. Beat Lone Peak to the yeah. now 6A state champion in week two. Ran through their region, got a hot knife through butter. And Done even, the same in the state tournament. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they trailed Jordan 21 to nothing in the quarters, came back to outscore him, what was it, 58 to 7 or something like that? Yeah. 
as down goes Call, try to take off, and he's dropped there by Jackson Light. Third and 10. Call fires out to Natoa, and he threw a heater. Natoa was not ready for that. And it's now fourth and 10. Hit it right in the face mask. <laughs> and Natoa not looking for that at all. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that one. So fourth and 10, this to keep the season and hopes alive. Trip to the top of the screen, up them, working on Scheffner here near side. Call flushed out. He had the first down by his feet, but throws it complete. What a throw. This is impressive from Call. He's on the move, he's outside the pocket. Not a lot of room to work. You'll see when this ball gets delivered how tight of a window this is and the junior able to deliver. Look at this. That's good coverage. So first down to 15. Looking left, fires over the middle, and incomplete. So you think about it, they've had two fourth downs. One aided by a penalty, and the other, that dime. I thought he could have ran for that, but even better to throw it. As we got a player down in the end zone. This was the intended target. Looks like just cramps. Let the professionals take over. 426 left in the fourth quarter. You're watching the 5A State Championship on live.ksl and DeseretNews.com. Welcome back to Ricicle Stadium. Players still down. We're in a TV timeout. We'll step aside. You're watching the 5A State Championship game on live.ksl and DeseretNews.com. Four twenty six to go is Arrington was able to get off the field. Cramps is taken care of. Palmer in the slot near side. Upham the outside receiver near side. Call looking left. Fires for Upham. And Nate Upham. Oh, he just unable to come up with that. And a pass interference flag comes in on John Scheffner. Upham was trying to adjust. This ball was thrown to the back corner, and he was trying to track it down aggressively. I couldn't quite, quite tell in real time if I thought that that was a valid P.I. or not. Dusty, I don't know if you had an initial judgment. I'll have to see what it is. I saw the official kind of point to his arm, thinking he armbarred him a little see, bit. Get another look here. I mean, we're blocked. Yeah. Right? 
Hard, hard to tell from that angle whether that's justified. We'll take one more look. Kind of got inside, maybe saying he's pushing him. Yeah. But it's only half the distance to the goal, so second down and three. Call again to Upham. Jump ball and blocked by Scheffner. I'll tell you what, Dusty. He's making a strong candidacy for our player of the game. <laughs> right. Scheffner has been outstanding. I got up him with two catches for 19 yards. And it's a size advantage, too. Right. And, you know, he hasn't been beat over the top. He's won one-on-one -on -one battles for the ball. Scheffner's been solid. Had that kick return. Yeah, big one. As it's third and three. Call. Fires. Incomplete. No flag. It'll be fourth down and three. See, with my eyes, I thought this one was more deserving. I don't think we get a great look at that angle, whether it was or not, but no flag thrown and bring up a fourth down here. Converted a fourth down just a, four plays ago. We got to get this one. They were stoned at fourth and two, fourth and goal from the two. Natoa in the backfield. Call, steps up, won't get away. Van Fillinger comes up with the sack. It's turnover on downs. And Corner Canyon looking to ice this thing away for their first ever state championship in football. How about two fourth down stops inside their own 10? I mean, that's been the Corner Canyon defense in this fourth quarter. And right now, that's the difference in the ball game, Dusty. Absolutely. The junior, Van Fillinger. Yeah, sarcastic chin on the other side. We want Bama. No, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Bama doesn't want Bama. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the best thing to do is to play Bama versus Bama. One team gets Tua and the other team gets Jalen. I think I'd take Tua's team. Oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be going to Coach Saban. I want to be on Team Crimson. Right. <laughs> But I'll tell you, Jalen would like that game. Hey, how about this? Corner Canyon, looking like they're going to go 13-0. As a big run from Bell. He had the big plays on the last drive. He's got another one here. Austin Bell inside of Sky Ridge territory. About to go 13-0. And, and uh, they'll be the only team in the state, Dusty, 13-0. The Milford men... Finished 12 and 0, so those are the only two undefeated teams in uh, Utah in 2018. And were they going to feel a little ripped off? Yeah. They lost two games. They did. They had a game against a team from America Samoa that could not make the trip, and then because of the wildfires down in the Spanish Fork Canyon or Salem Hills area, they did not play against Salem Hills because of the air quality. No, I'm doing my math. Maybe they're going to go 12 and 0. Yeah, they'll play 10. Yeah, 10 regular yeah. season. Four playoff. Yeah. They'll be 14. They've lost two games. So they're about to go 12 0. So they and the Milford men will be tied at 12 0. How about this? Cole Hagan will go 14 0 as a quarterback at Corner Kansas starter. N not a bad record. Huh? Right. He could say, I have not lost as a, st as a quarterback for Corner yeah. Canyon. Corner Canyon is undefeated with him at quarterback. H how about this? I'm going to put on my Dusty Litster hat. You ready for this? No, I'm ready. Cole's father, Sean. Played football here at the University of Utah. Also played baseball, was drafted, played for my Pittsburgh Pirates, or at least in their farm system. But uh, obviously he's got a bit of a slinger lining up behind center here at Corner Canyon. And Cole coming back one more year. Got to put that 14-0 record on the line next year. <laughs> and it, it might not get any easier. No. There's a little tease for you. Well, we can talk about it. 2.38 and a rolling clock. Right. The first draft of the realignment, realignment. came out, and just as we suspected, right now, Corner Canyon slated to go to 6A. 
Have fun. You want Bama? How's Bingham? <laughs> Still starts how's with Lone, a B, right? How, how's Lone Peak? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Or, uh, yeah, they get, you're going to have to run the gauntlet. East wanted it. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Well, it was just two years ago they won the 5A championship. Hey, we want we want Bingham. Yeah. Remember that was the old thing? We want Bingham. Yeah. yeah. I mean, It'll this be, isn't to rub any, anybody's face in anything, yeah, but 0-4. Yeah. Oh, oh and, oh and yeah. It, or 0-3, oh sorry. It's not as easy as it looks. No. Now, granted, I think they said we wanted them with Jalen Warren. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you have, you have a 3,000-yard running back, and... I think you have a pretty good chance against anyone in this state. Yeah, a uh, couple of penalties going against uh, Corner Canyon. Coach Kerr still frustrated. Threw his play sheet, but it was clipped to his uh, <laughs> pants there. Didn't go very far. But how about uh, Coach Kerr? What a job. Now, let's put on, my, I'm going to put on my own hat here for a second. <laughs> how about the quarterbacks under the tutelage of Coach Kerr? Since we started covering, Sean Taylor, Cor... Er, Taylor Hart, uh, McCoy Hill, Austin Confensis. Don't leave him out. Drew List. There you go. <laughs> Crew Wakely, Zach Wilson, yeah. Cole Hagen. Mercy. A lot of those guys playing ball at the next level. And all of which in high school were spectacular. Yeah. And then you can go into the wide receivers, mind you. Yeah. Cody Raymond. Can name more. Spencer Curtis. I mean, you got Jackson up at the university or at Weber State. Isaiah Jackson. Isaiah Jackson. You got uh, so many just to go through. Add John Mitchell to that list. Absolutely. Yeah, and his own son. Yes. Yeah. There's a second down at 29 and another penalty. I think this will be the false start. Yo, know, and. I mean, what a good feeling for Corner Canyon. Again, I, I think most people in this stadium thought they had that game wrapped up last year. And credit to Sky Ridge, not trying to take anything away, but for Corner Canyon to be able to use that game as motivation, come back here and, uh, you know, beat Sky Ridge in the game that, that will matter most, good on these young men and on that coaching staff to be able to, you know, in their minds, in their minds, right yeah. that wrong, right? Well, because they thought they had that game done. Absolutely. And uh, let's say this while we're going through all this, because 115 o'clock is going to keep running. Coach Lehman, three years at yeah. Sky Ridge, two state championship appearances. They're 6-1 and one in the playoffs, Dusty. <laughs> They've been around for three years. Playing game in his first year, state championship game appearance in his second, state, cha state championship game appearance in his third. As Hagen pulls on that. And then uh, <laughs> one of the worst slide for his dad being a baseball player. Um, it's like he was going to make a snowman, but there's no snow. <laughs> You want to build a snowman. We'll work it's on that. Right? Third down and long. But uh, what a year. And uh, what a good two years. And a proud tradition now being built by these seniors here at uh, Sky Ridge and what they've been able to accomplish in the three years here as the first ever Sky Ridge Falcon football team. It's been remarkable. And, and to be able to maintain that success, I mean, that, that's the thing to me is you come in, and you start to own a region like they've done, and now, you know, you're in the top two or three of the classification. For Sky Ridge also about to be a lot harder, but hey, what they've done under Coach Lehman just a couple of years has been remarkable. As the final seconds go down, this, the first ever state championship in football for the Corner Canyon Chargers. Start partying, Draper. Their first ever state championship coming home in football. 31 to 14, Corner Canyon avenges the semifinal loss from a year ago, and they are the kings of 5A football and the second state championship as a head coach for Coach Eric Kerr. Dane, our National Guard player of the game. Dusty, this one's really tough. I'm going to go two guys because I, you know, why not? I've done it all day. So uh, for Corner Canyon, to me, I, I love the contribution by Austin Bell, particularly in that mm. fourth quarter. I thought he was huge on a couple of those final drives to really seal this game away. But Cole Hagen, Dusty, he was 7 of 14 for 93 yards and a half with three sacks. And I stopped keeping stats with about four minutes left to go. I have him at 13 of 24, 247, three touchdowns. His second half performance was a big difference in this ball game. Made some timely throws, accurate throws. 
did a great job maneuvering the defense with his legs. Cole Hagen, Austin Bell, my co-players of the game. For Sky Ridge, it's not a season loss. Back-to-back -back years in a state championship game is a hard thing to do. Uh, a lot of heartache and pain to be felt in the white jerseys tonight. But what a year for them and a terrific season. But this 5A year is about the Corner Canyon Chargers. They have lost one game in the last two years, and it was to Sky Ridge. They avenge that loss and now take the state championship trophy to Draper. Congratulations to Corner Canyon, your 2018 5A state champions. For Thompson Coles, Ryan Rasmussen, and Dane Stewart, I am Dusty Lister. Thanks for joining us and watching the 2018 5A state championship on live.ksl and deseretnews.com. Commentary brought to you by the Orthopedic Specialty Hospital and the Utah Army National Guard. So long until August for football and for joining us right here. Watch Deseret News Rewind. Got the rewind coming up and also the moments of the week with Corner Canyon, your 5A state champions. So long from Rice Eccles Stadium.